and welcome to another video. This time I'm going to show how to install a full-size graphics card to a Dell Optiplex 790 SFF computer. Or how do we get from this to this. After that I'm going to test some games on this PC. First I'll disconnect the optical drive cables, then take out the optical drive itself and then take out the optical drive and HDD tray. This PC has 8 gigs of memory, that should be fine for most games so I don't need to upgrade that. Since this PC already has an i5, I won't upgrade the CPU, but I will apply new thermal paste. After putting the CPU cooler back on, it's time to do the same to this AMD RX 550 graphics card. The old thermal paste had gotten pretty dry and crusty and it took some scraping with a plastic tool to get it off the heatsink side. On the GPU side itself I used a alcohol pad because you need to be more careful with this GPU dye. After the GPU die itself was clean and shiny again, I used the alcohol pad to get the rest of old thermal paste off the heatsink. There was one problem with this specific graphics card, as it was this fan would hit the memory sticks and it wouldn't be able to spin so I need to engineer something so that the fan wouldn't hit the memory. I put some rubber feet on the graphics card and I put this break of PCIe cover on top of the wrapper feet. I bent the PCIe cover so that it would fit better and then just used some packaging wire to attach it to the card. This is the end result. After my small modification was ready I just applied the new paste and put the card back together. I put one more rubber foot there so that this part won't touch the memory either. This is where we'll be installing the graphics card. And we need to use a PCIe riser cable to attach the card to the PCIe slot. I put some more of these rubber sticker things on the card in parts that would touch something inside the PC. Conveniently, one of the mounting holes on the fan lines up with the PCIe bracket, so 
the bracket can be screwed down on the fan. Next, the PCIe riser cable needs to be attached to the card itself. Since all the display connectors will be inside the PC now, we need to have a cable that goes to the card. I could just pass through a normal HDMI cable, but cleaner solution is to use one of these female to male. HDMI adapters. This way the HDMI connector can be brought to the back I.O. One end of the cable plugs in to the card like a normal HDMI cable and the other end can be mounted on a PCIe slot. To clean up the front panel of the PC a bit, I took the Dell logo off. It happens to be right in front of the intake fan, so it probably has a small tiny effect to cooling also. I took the stickers off and put the Core i5 sticker to cover the hole left by the Dell logo. Since there's no optical drive anymore and there's a graphics card instead, I decided to cover the hole left by the optical drive and put a mesh there instead so that the graphics card could maybe have a tiny bit more cooling that way also. I had to take the PCIe riser out in order to fit the SATA cables in. After that I had to figure out how do I fit two drives inside the PC. It would probably be much easier to use just a one larger SSD, but I had a 120GB one and I needed to get an HDD inside to in order to have some Steam library space in this PC. I put some rubber insulation on all sides of the HDD that will be touching either the PSU or the motherboard and uh, you need to check that no component on the motherboard touches a metallic part of the HDD. I know that the HDD mounting on this PC looks horrible, but I didn't find any other way to get an HDD inside this PC. And also in my first video, over a year ago I did the same thing and that PC has held up well. The HDD and the SSD are connected to the back of the PC and the SSD sits flush with the side panel so there should be really no way for the HDD to move anywhere. I put one rubber foot on the back side of the GPU to prevent it from 
coming in contact with the side panel. I found one more place where the metal of one of the latches of the side panel could come into contact with the PCB, so I put some tape there. The PCIe riser may block the latch from working, but you can open the PC by pressing this tab on the back of the PC. This is how the end result looks like. I got the front panel modification from a piece of silver vinyl wrap and there's two small holes that are covered by the plastic mesh. There's at least some air that goes through there but it probably won't make much difference. Here is the finished build with another Dell Optiplex SFF PC that I plan to upgrade later on this channel. Here you can see the detailed specs and a 3D Mark run of this PC. CSGO at low settings 1080p run playably but the frame rate dipped too close to 60 sometimes so this game is playable on this PC for now but updates could change the performance requirements for the game as they've done previously and that could mean this PC might not be able to handle this game for long even on low settings but I don't know for now it does. Hitman 2 at 1080p low might be actually borderline playable depending on standards but in this first mission when there's really nothing happening yet the FPS is quite good but as soon as something starts happening the performance drops close to 30 FPS so yeah maybe playable depends on standards Last game to test is Phasmophobia and uh, this will be tested at low settings 1080p as the other games. This game doesn't require very powerful hardware usually and this is no exception, it runs really well on this PC. Next I'll test Apex Legends at 1080p low and as you can see this game doesn't run so well at all and since this is an FPS game high frame rate is pretty much required in order to play and actually enjoy this game so this game just seems to be too much at 1080p low settings. When the resolution is lowered down to 1366 times 768, the game becomes mostly playable and the FPS will actually mostly stay at acceptable numbers even during combat. Next I'll test Kingdom Come Deliverance at 1080p upscale I think and low settings. This game runs ok considering this usually doesn't run on lower end hardware but the RX 550 is pretty recent card and has 2 gigs of memory so that 
maybe helps a little. The one lag here probably depends on the game being installed on an HDD and having to load when entering the village, but otherwise it's acceptable. Fortnite at 10 ADP low has the usual slowdowns in the battle bus starting scene and during the parachuting but after that it performs okay and is totally playable however I didn't set the rendering distance higher than near to keep this level of performance and uh, last I tested Cyberpunk 2077 I knew that this game wouldn't work well enough but it was interesting to see anyway I think I'm beginning to believe that this game requires more than 8 gigs of RAM but yeah unsurprisingly it doesn't run Cyberpunk